Well, thank you for the introduction, and uh, this, I guess, will be the second layer two related talk today. Um, George has just gave a very good system of knowledge just now. And, uh, you know, what I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, about more about uh, a specific piece of the layer two technology on the state channel networks. Uh, so I'm, fr I'm Mo from Seller, and Seller is a layer two scaling uh, a platform that focuses on state channel technology. And uh, we, uh, we have recently launched on Mingnet. We are actually the first and only live generalized state channel uh, today. And, uh, you know, uh, we, in the Mingnet, we launched the three pieces of technology stack. The first is actually a user-facing product that you can play eSport games and win crypto prizes on the Seller X application. Because we're using a layer two technology, there's a very uh, few or like there's almost a no, um, you know, kind of a the normal friction you would expect from the blockchain applications. Everything is smooth, everything is instant, interactive, and free. So, uh, and we, just today, we launched the application officially on App Store. So if you can search for uh, Seller X in your App Store, you will be able to find it. This is the world's first eSport game where you can win real money launched on App, App Store. And uh, along with the, the Seller X SDK, we launched the Seller X Gaming SDK, which is f specifically focusing on bring mainstream gamers or mainstream game developers to the blockchain space without actually letting them to even know anything about blockchain. And then, of course, we have the Seller Web3 Web SDK, which is focusing specifically on the uh, blockchain community as well. Uh, and we're going to talk about the technology stack behind that. So, uh, but first, the uh, Seller X. Uh, there's a, a QR code you can scan here as well. And uh, for the Seller X application, we just uh, in test uh, stage for three months, or so, and we already have about $1.7 million spent in the application and about 13,000 uh, uh, monthly active users. It's one of the most used blockchain applications actually today. And, uh, you know, there are about, uh, you know, 330K games played across 98 different countries. Now, to bring our, our mission here is not only to build the best technology platform, but also bring uh, the most adoption to the blockchain, especially from the mainstream. Uh, we often get a question that, like, okay, can I build on games on top of a Seller X? Uh, do I need to understand the Seller's layer two technology? Do I need to hand off, uh, you know, off-chain payment? Do I need to write a lot of smart contract, privacy key management, all that stuff? So our approach um, is to wrap that thing all up and uh, just give a very simple answer of no to all of the previous questions and uh, propose something called Seller X Gaming as Developer SDK to help the game developers who are not familiar with blockchain space to easily port their game into Seller with just two lines of code added in their application. So, uh, you know, in very short period of time of the uh, developer's portal launch, we have about 200 developers registered submitted already more than 100 games and with each of them taking less than 30 minutes to integrate uh, with uh, a pool from all the developers. And of course, we have the Web3 SDK exposed as uh, the connecting piece to the entire Web3 world and evolve with the community to support much more use cases than just uh, uh, game applications as well. And very recently, we open sourced uh, uh, the full protocol specification of Seller Network, and you can check out the full protocol specification uh, here. This is uh, the first and only open source, very detailed specification of how a generalized state channel network runs. So the, uh, the following of the talk, I will basically talk through um, uh, you know, the entire specification in terms of uh, how we architect a center network and what are some of the key design principles to achieve a high performance and production grade um, layer two scaling architecture. So the layer two scaling architecture we have itself is actually a layered architecture. So, uh, you know, on the lowest layer, there are a bunch of smart contracts that are connecting to the underlying blockchain. Right now, we're connecting to um, the Ethereum, but we can swap those blockchain smart contracts out to any kind of blockchain, just like writing drivers for different operating systems to support different uh, blockchains and expand on top of uh, uh, the blockchains that we already support. And on top of the blockchain uh, smart contract layer, uh, we have the generic payment channel network. Um, so if you guys heard about Lightning, uh, this, this layer looks like Lightning, but the functionality is very different in the sense that in Lightning, you can only send very simple payments, just like a, you know, A paid, B, S paid, Bob. But 
In Setter, the key difference here is that we can enable something called a generic condition payment. Let's say, you know, Alice sent Bob like, uh, you know, $5 across network, um, you know, across multiple relay nodes. And this payment can be a conditional payment, meaning that Alice committed the fund to Bob, but it is not immediately resolved. It actually depends on a generic conditional resolution interface. Basically, it says that, okay, uh, you know, I'm sending you a payment, but that payment, the exact result of that payment, how much of that payment you actually receive finally, will depend on the conditional resolution interface. And the conditional resolution interface is, is very generic interface, and, uh, you know, you can build a state channel applications, but you can also connect this kind of a conditional dependency with existing on-chain applications or even on-chain oracles. You can say, look, I'm going to send you a conditional payment, uh, you know, and conditional depends on um, a chain links oracles uh, res uh, output result, for example. And, uh, you know, in terms of the gen uh, generalized uh, state channel piece, we have this uh, uh, underlying payment network connecting to this transitional resolution interface and also the state channel applications. And the state channel application itself will have a state progression protocol defined in it to uh, allow uh, developers to easily port and implement their applications in a state channel manner. So in the design of the layered architecture, we strive to achieve four goals. Simplicity, extremely high performance, very low cost, and high flexibility for future extension. So to achieve that, we actually need to drill down to the lowest level of primitive of center network, which is this single hop, hop by hop conditional payment channel. So the conditional payment channel actually consists of two parts. One is the um, you know, off-chain and on-chain data structure, and then uh, the other part is the layer two off-chain communication protocols. Uh, and we're gonna talk about them both. So for the core architecture here, we actually implemented the, this uh, fully duplex uh, state channel uh, that, uh, uh, that support concurrent, uh, you know, duplex sending uh, capability with two simplex payment channel state combined. So there are a bunch of uh, uh, properties here, and you can definitely look into the, uh, you know, uh, the specification. But the key thing to note is that uh, the reason that we can support conditional payment is because in the data structure uh, or in the protobuf message, we have a pending pay ID, which are basically pointers to these conditional payments that I just mentioned about. So, okay, what exactly then is conditional payment? Well, conditional payment basically look like this. There are timestamp, source destination, and pay resolvers, uh, but the key thing to understand here are a list of conditions and then the associated transfer functions. So what are conditions? Well, condition in Ethereum smart contract sense, you can just simply think of them as function pointers that can get you some result from a certain function. Right, so basically, you can say that, okay, now I have this conditional payment with this condition, and this condition is gonna check that contract, that Oracle contract's output. And uh, you know, it's gonna take back that output, and you can have a list of conditions in a single conditional payment. And what are the you know, uh, output uh, or outcome of these kind of a conditional uh, payment resolution interfaces? They can be arbitrary bytes. Now, now you've got all these bytes and you have a conditional payment, you have a bunch of money locked in in that conditional payment. What do you do about this money and uh, you know, all the bytes? Well, you use something called a transfer function that interpret the outcome of each of the conditional um, you know, uh, resolution interface, and then you interpret that into a final resolution result of the conditional payment. So, uh, you know, we, we actually build, to, to say it more concretely, uh, we build a lot of a pre-build or pre-supported the conditional transfer functions, including Boolean ends or circuits, uh, numerical add, maximal and mean. Basically, you can send a, like a, a Boolean conditional payment basically saying that, okay, I will only pay you this if that becomes true. So that is kind of the core data structure of uh, the single hop conditional payment. And then on top of this core data stru uh, structure, the important question to ask is uh, how do you set up a conditional payment? How do you resolve this conditional payment uh, uh, you know, entirely off chain if everyone is a cooperative? And how do you adju adjudicate the conditional payment result uh, you know, if some party goes offline or uh, just trying to be malici maliciously adjudicating uh, for you? Uh, so we have the, uh, a series of data protocols that is specifically and highly optimized designed uh, 
um, to do set, uh, payment setup, uh, settlement of payment off-chain, and resolve of payment on-chain for this kind of a conditional payment architecture. And importantly, we also introduced something that is uh, not there for any kind of off-chain protocol uh, that is a sliding window protocol for the conditional payment network. And the reason for that is that, you know, everyone says that, okay, layer two have infinite uh, capacity and infinite kind of, uh, uh, you know, capability to increase transaction capacity, but it's not actually the case. If in this layer two network or in Lightning, for example, if you can only send one payment by one round trip time, um, you know, the amount of payment you can send or the amount of uh, uh, payment the, the, the network can support or transaction the, and the network can support is actually very limited by the round trip time. If the round trip time is 100 milliseconds, then in, on this particular link, you can only support uh, 10 transactions per second. So, we make the entire protocol fully concurrent, uh, compatible, and introduce the something called sliding window um, that is derived from the TCP congestion control protocol, but very much different because TC in TCP, uh, you know, your packets are not correlated with each other. But in this kind of conditional payment, each state is built on top of the existing states, and how to handle failures, how to handle packet loss is a very important topic. But uh, we figured that out, and uh, you know, that is also in our open source uh, uh, protocol specification uh, for you to look. Now, after that, what we have now in hand is a very simple, very concise, and well-defined hop-by-hop -hop conditional payment pr pr primitive, and we're gonna take that primitive, which is uh, uh, achieves simplicity, fully duplex, and high throughput, and uh, gonna build on top of that primitive to a multi-hop network that support arbitrary state transitions as well. So the important question is, okay, then you have this as a foundation. Uh, what about multi-hop networks? Like how does this gonna be stitched together? Well, when building multi-hop networks, we adopt a very, very important design principle called end-to-end -end argumenting system design, which is actually the guiding design principle of internet as we know today. So, uh, to put it concisely, uh, you know, the end-to-end -end argument in system design here basically means that if in a system or in a network design, uh, there are some functionality, you have to put that on the end host or onto on end clients anyway, then the middle of the network or the, the relay node of the network should not handle or should not even have that functionality. One very good example of this kind of end-to-end -end argument is the network reliability transfer, right? So, uh, you, you know, in, in networking uh, uh, system uh, today, you use TCP, which is uh, basically letting the end host to, to ensure the data is reliably delivered. Um, you know, in the early days of the internet, about 30 years ago, people actually had debates saying that we need to implement some reliable single link uh, in the network to allow the networking devices to actually ensure the perfect delivery of the uh, packet. But that quickly ran into a whole lot of issues, including congestion, including all that stuff. So people said, oh, okay, let's keep the core of the network extremely simple and robust and push as many complexity as possible to the edge. Now, this is what we also did in designing this kind of a, a multi-hop conditional payment network. We cleanly decouple the funding allocation, which is the conditional payment process, and the state progression, which is the, the, what, what the conditional pro, uh, payment depends on uh, entirely, and push all the complexity to the edge uh, and minimize the, uh, the relay nodes the complexity. So, um, you know, uh, we build two uh, kind of a pre-built protocol that people can directly use uh, on cellular networks. The first is the multi-hall payment with Boolean conditions. And, uh, you know, basically it's, it's a source-based destination full amount only if, uh, if and only if the condition is true. And some example can be head-to-head -head game competitions. Uh, the games you're playing in cellular actually use this kind of conditional payment capability. And the prediction market, P2P social betting, these are all kind of, uh, you know, examples to use uh, uh, the multi-hop payment with con uh, Boolean conditions. And, uh, you know, to build the multi-hop protocol, the nice thing about how we define the single-hop protocol is that you can simply stitch the single-hop protocols to multi-hop, and that works. And, you know, remember Lightning have, um, you know, something called hash time lock, and hash time lock here can be simply expressed as one kind of, one kind of a condition. 
in this kind of uh, in this kind of conditional payment uh, capability. And in some cases, if it is a really a multi-hop conditional payment with Boolean condition, the concept of multi-hop or the concept of hash time law can also be entirely removed from the picture. And uh, you know the style of payment uh, uh, off chain. You can see like I'm basically stitching the previous uh, graph together into multiple hop. And uh, you know what's the property of this? Like what's exactly the property of this that achieved the, the uh, design goals? Well, it's extremely simple. In this case, the relay node never actually cares about the application logic. So you may think that okay, if you guys are using this conditional payment logic here, that it conditionally depends on some application's outcome. What happens if the application itself is malicious? If the application itself exhibits Byzantine behavior, where the outcome is true for some time and then become false, and you know, flapping back and forth, and you know, it never finalizes. What happens if the payment never, you know, the condition never finalizes and stuff like that? So we actually built the entire protocol uh, so that the relay node never cares about the application logic and the robust to any kind of a malicious behavior uh, in the, uh, inside of the uh, network and inside of the application. And uh, you know, uh, a very important thing for Saturn, uh, sorry, for any kind of a layer two network is the capability to bring justice by using on-chain adjudication. And uh, you know there are different arguments here that is uh, you know in the middle of the network should we allow people or should we kind of put the burden of adjudication also for to this relay node? Well, uh, we think that to maintain the extremely simple and low cost network, we should uh, you know not let the uh, middle of the network take anything uh, related to kind of on-chain dispute. So in this case, relay node never sends any on-chain dispute and actually requires zero on-chain monitoring required. And uh, you know, it's fully secure, as I mentioned, and extremely low messaging overhead in terms of the number of message sent. In the cooperative case, you just need 1.5 uh, round trip to set up the entire transaction, and then, you know, another one, one round trip to resolve the uh, transaction. And we extend that by building multi-hop uh, payment with numerical conditions that basically says that a sender pays uh, uh, the receiver a certain amount um, you know, from zero to maximal, and the, the maximal amount is previously committed, basically. And there are a lot of use cases, including second price uh, auction, usage-based car insurance, metered hosting services as SL guarantees, peer-to-peer uh, -peer VPN services with instant payment, and more. And you know, there are also associated uh, different kind of uh, communication protocols, and also the properties, are very similar properties associated with that as well. So these two parts, we believe that it's highly optimized for 99% of use cases for layer two um, payment networks with generic uh, conditional dependency capability. And this kind of a multi-hop payment network now depends on the conditional resolution interface, which is uh, basically two function calls, is finalized, is the state of the application in a finalized state, and get outcome, which is basically the function that gets bytes from the, um, you know, from the, from the application. And on top of that, you can connect the term-based uh, state channel application, which we support and uh, you know, we, we provide a framework for, and also on-chain applications that you can connect to any kind of on-chain Oracle contract or non-Oracle contract, or even you can connect to other layer two construct that you can connect even to a roll-up state uh, in a roll-up application. And the entire architecture is very flexible with the underlying hop-by-hop -hop conditional payment capability. You can also implement any kind of a funding allocation um, protocol as you like by building on top of that and also connecting to other kind of uh, application uh, scenarios. So the key takeaway here is that we uh, you know, adopt the de design principle of uh, uh, you know, security first and trust free and minimize any kind of on-chain footprint and minimize uh, the relay nodes, on any, any kind of on-chain interactions for the relay nodes. And uh, you know, uh, we of course minimize the on-chain call transactions and also minimize the off-chain communication overhead. That is our design principle to design a highly scalable and production ready um, state channel network. And you know, for that design, uh, to, to, for that, with that design principle, we made some de uh, important design choices, uh, which I already talked about some of them. Uh, but also, one two important things that I would like to highlight here 
is um, you know, we actually uh, you know, designed for blockchain agnostic from day one. Uh, so all of the data structure we have are expressed in uh, protobuf. So we actually build a Solidity protobuf parser, open source Solidity protobuf parser, to parse these data structure in and out of Solidity. Um, very efficiently and uh, you know highly optimized. That way, uh, porting Stellar Network to any other blockchain architecture is as simple as just replicating that smart contract capability and replicating that smart contract um, logic, but the entire off-chain stack does not need to be touched because the data communication in and out from the blockchain is staying the same. And uh, uh, you know, it's very extremely important that you be able to upgrade the network because layer two a network is going to be much more dynamic than layer one in terms of the upgrade. So from the very beginning, we aim for zero downtime upgrade capability. And we have done, since our uh, alpha mainnet launch, we have done three upgrades for the mainnet and there has been zero downtime during this upgrade. And of course, we are very flexible for future use cases uh, other than game, but I would definitely invite you guys to try out the gaming application we have. And um, with that, um, you know, I guess, uh, do I have like one minute for questions, maybe? Yeah, five minutes, maybe? Yeah, five minutes. Any questions? All right. Thank you.